Hi again, Mark here from Nomad Stays. Uh, we're doing another interview with some interesting nomads here today. Um, today I'm in Bansko in Bulgaria. We're staying at our, one of our wonderful stays that we've stayed at a few, couple of times the last couple of years, Four Leaf Clover. One of the reasons we like Four Leaf Clover is that it's such a great community of other entrepreneurs and freelancers uh, in a really cheap part of Europe. And at the moment, weather is absolutely stunning. So once again, Nomad Stays, great place for booking accommodation at affordable rates for digital nomads, remote workers all around the world. So I'm going to introduce Morty and Lara and Miss Millie, um, who we've met recently here in, uh, in Bansko in Bulgaria. Um, Morty, welcome. Hey, how are you? No, oh, very good. And um, congratulations, you've, you've added another country to your global list of, um, of travels. Yes, yes. It's, it's beautiful here in Yeah. I love it. And, and clearly you're travelling with your family. Um, yes. <laughs> and Miss, Miss, Miss Millie? Yeah. Are, are, we, are we going to go hi? shy again, are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going to go, yeah. We're <laughs> Yeah. You need to be ready for anything when you travel with a baby. Yeah. So. Millie's been entertaining us for a few weeks now. Um, she's she's uh, really cute and normally outgoing, but uh, doesn't like being put on the spot. She's a good hiker too. A good hiker, yes. Yeah. Yes, we went exploring some wonderful things a, a few weeks ago. Yes. But uh, Ra Morty, um, you've been travelling a number of years, haven't you? Yes, we've been travelling for two years now. Since Millie was uh, six year old, six uh, months old, yeah, um, it's been crazy with her. Really, like we, we didn't travel full time before, so we're nomads with a baby, like from the start. So yeah, we used to it, but it's it's very, it has like a good balance. It's very exciting, and very fun, and to be with her all the time and stuff like that. But well, you're, you're traveling as a family. Yeah, yeah, you know, the family is traveling together. You're you're building careers. Um, you've gone completely freelance, yeah. and you've got a, a healthy lifestyle, a family lifestyle, and you're out yeah. exploring the world. Where were you just before you came to Bunsko? Uh, for Bunsko we were in uh, Georgia. Georgia? Three months. Yeah. Yeah, Tbilisi and Batumi. Tbilisi and Batumi. Uh-huh. Yeah, exploring Georgia. Beautiful country. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, we didn't expect it, but uh, we found beautiful views. And great people. Absolutely. No, I love yeah. I love Georgia. Uh, the crazy. landscape, the people, the history. Yeah, so surprising. Yeah, and the food, the culture, a, a very family supportive environment too. Yes. You would yeah, have felt exactly. very comfortable. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and and before that, for that we were uh, on a visit in Israel, visiting mm -hmm. our families. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be one month, but then uh, the airport closed and we stayed for three months. So you are you are Israeli, aren't you? So yeah, we are originally, from Israel, originally. Yeah, originally yeah, from you, Israel. you you escaped. Uh, just, sorry, left a few yeah. years ago. <laughs> yeah, two years I, ago. I can say that as an Australian that that escaping yeah, is, escaping yeah, is, yeah. is, is it's, it's appropriate. Yeah. For. yeah, it's a whole different life. Really, it's just it's unbelievable how fast how quickly it changes. Yes, and how better it is than. Normal kind yeah. of style. But you, you've already spent some time in Southeast Asia. Yeah, yeah. We were we started at the beginning. We started in here in Bulgaria. Yeah. Um, in uh, in uh, Plovdiv and Sofia. Mm -hmm. Then we yes. went to Czech Republic. Yes. Um, Poland, Romania, right? Yes. Then we came to a visit to Israel, and then we flew to Japan for one month. That was February. Then we uh, went to Vietnam. And a week later, they closed the whole country, and we, we were stuck there for 10 months. It was amazing. It was the best place to be stuck at. Uh, yeah. St cold. Stuck on the beach in Da Nang, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. In, in Hoi An. In Hoi An, yeah. Hoi An, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it's no. amazing because it's a very tourist village when it's high season and everything is working, but we were all alone. and uh, yeah. There were a few expats and few tourists that got stuck too, but... Yeah, it was, was kind of, amazing. It was kind of like a community of people that were stuck there. Yeah, yeah very supportive. Uh, and it's a very pretty town, the, the river, the markets yeah. and everything. Uh, the, the local costumes that the people wear is, is actually one of the brighter areas of, of yeah. um, Vietnam as well. Yeah. Uh, yes. I, uh, the fond memories of, of Hoi An. Even, was... even in lockdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a little bit. It was sad to see the locals. They were really hurt from the situation. A lot yeah. of restaurants yeah. were closed. 
the beach, a lot of yeah, things. It was a lot of mixed feelings because we got yeah. to, to enjoy places on our own, places yeah. that are usually packed with tourists. So it was fun that way, but it was a little bit sad because you see how the locals are yeah. hard for them. They're, yeah. they're so dependent on tourism in yeah. a number of these yeah, locations. Yeah. Especially this place, like yeah. it's very known for tourists. And yeah. But it was beautiful. Um, now, leaving Israel as yeah. a young family <laughs> with a six-month-old, how, um, how did the family take that? Well, <laughs> uh, at the start, uh, I think uh, they were like very surprised of what we were going to do and shocked. And I don't really believe they, they uh, knew it's going to be a long term. It's like maybe it's just something that it will go away. Yeah. They'll go try and come back. Uh, so they, they, I, they uh, thought maybe it would yeah. work. Uh, and we tried to explain what we are planning to do. But overall, uh, they were very supportive. Yeah. Like, go explore, it's your time. That was the thing we didn't expect. It. Like, uh, very, go see the world. Yeah. They, were, was, wor they were worried about Mili, of course. Yeah. People always ask, how are you going to manage with diapers and uh, food? And, like, it, it uh, exists only in Israel. <laughs> 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 but the truth is, you can find anything everywhere. It, you just need to check and to be prepared to change things. And thank you for yep, no, <laughs> feeling so full feeling over so I absolutely agree. I've, I've traveled more than a hundred countries in the world. No, 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 no. Yeah, you spilled it. It's okay. Oh. It's okay. <laughs> oh, Millie. Oh, oh, oh. She's very sad. Okay. Oh, oh. We also should mention uh, today in uh, Bulgaria is quite hot. And, Millie uh, will keep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it will end in, uh, in 30 seconds. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, it's quite hot and tiring um, as well, um, particularly for little ones. But um, yeah, the funny thing is, there are shops all around the world, and there are babies all around the world, and, and you can doctors and medicines and everything. Yeah, oh no, who would have thought these things? <laughs> I think we when we get preoccupied on the things we know. We're, a little bit afraid to go out of the boundaries, but once you go out, you understand that everybody in the world is the same. Everybody have kids, and they worry about them, and you have everything you need. Yeah, has it changed your attitude of the media and reading the media? Wow. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen news a thing for two years. It's, it changed everything. Really, it's, yeah. I think it's. Uh, I mean, I know how the, how the industry works, and the, the news, how how fear makes people uh, buy stuff and see more TV and get hooked on it. But, but when you go out to the world, you understand that people are a lot nicer than you think. Yes. Even people that, that are supposed to be like your enemies or people that uh, Israel have conflicts with. Yep. You, you know that people are just people and you just, you just most of them want to live their lives and be happy. And yes. No. Um, so it really changed my perspective about a lot of things. And, and when you discover for yourself, it's a great learning activity. Yes. And, and, and for us at our age group, it's, it's new, but for Millie, it's normal. Yeah. yeah. I think that, that's one of our favorite things, that she will grow up in something that is really normal for her. Yep. But for most people, it's very foreign. It's yes. Not, it's not, uh, yeah, she's a nomad from uh, six months old. Yeah. She doesn't know anything else. No. Uh, uh, every place we, we go, no she's, yeah, she's how calling gonna, power house. Yeah. Like th this is what we, we... We don't really know how it will affect her, but we're pretty sure it will have a very, very positive effect we, on her we, personality. We can see. So here's a two and a half year old that talks with every adult that she can talk with. Yeah. yeah. Um, she's, she's not limited to a peer group of similar age kids or anything. She's playing with people, kids yeah. in the street that don't yeah, speak exactly. any common language. In every country, in every <laughs> language, they just communicate by themselves. Uh, yeah. It was one of the situation in Vietnam. It was the first time we were in a building apartment and we went downstairs and there was a little girl, Vietnamese girl, that was really a bit older than her, really worried about her because she's just started walking and she's w walked through uh, to the uh, street yep. and, uh, and where the car goes to, for parking. 
and she was like standing don't go there don't go there and really doesn't understand but she she did understand she wants her to like to stop so and from then to protect her. they just walked one after the other yeah. and communicate without words yep. just signs and i was so emotional because it was like the first <laughs> real connection not just the waving or saying yeah. hi or something we supported just something from herself and from other girls so yeah. I, I saw her playing up on Viren Mountain the other day with uh, throwing this uh, little airplane and this, yeah. this rubber airplane around with some of the Bulgarian kids that yeah. had brought it up there to her yeah. they were all sharing it's you know it's yeah, this just is automatic another concept the sharing I saw it in Vietnam and here and in Georgia if you see uh, a toy lying around, even a bicycle or um, a anything, people will share with you. They will go, yeah. okay, she can use it, and they share bucket and everything. There, we didn't heard once like, no, 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 don't, th never. Yeah. yeah. And and it's amazing. It's yeah. nice for her to see her exposed. To we've we've met uh, many nomads that travel yeah. with their children over the years and um you know, there's some added pressure you know the, the peer pressure there's pressure from work there's pressure from families yeah. but in every case the kids are much more mature uh, at a much earlier range than than what we see in uh, more sedate sort of families yeah. and much less fear yeah, yeah. much you know great curiosity yeah she's <laughs> very curious very... are you looking at dad's camera yeah yes dad's live streaming as well you can say hi what you eat Mm, dates? Tamal. It's dates. You like it. <laughs> I think she wants to go play with Dakar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> Millie has uh, fallen in love with our dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she loves dogs and cats. And yes. Uh, and she actually, mm. she was the whole point of, of doing this because when she was born, she uh, I was working full time in a advertising agency and she was had her own job. She was on a maternity leave. Yeah. And she was thinking, in Israel you get three months paid and then you can have another three months on your own expense. Okay. So she was thinking, there's no way in the world, right, I can yeah. put her in, uh, in somewhere else in, in three a months. Yeah. Yeah. It was absurd that I need to let her go and yeah. after like six months. And in Israel you need, I guess in other places in the yeah. world, you need to be prepared, so we need mm. to sign your kids yeah. like a half a year or maybe a year before because there's no room. And yeah. I was people ask me, Where are you going to put her and what are you going to do? And every every time I the question was raised, I like, How do I, do this. <laughs> how can I yeah. put her? It was so fun every day to see her. There's no more dates, Mimi, <laughs> <laughs> only raisins. <laughs> but that raises another question, you know. So you've left employment and you've effectively taken a, a gap year of a couple of years yeah. to to build up uh, to bring up your family bring up Millie yeah how did you go transitioning income wise it wasn't easy yeah, <laughs> yeah I've been hired most of my life working yeah. in business and agencies um, and I always wanted to be freelance to work on my own business but it was comfortable very very comfortable yeah another day and I had a very good job in a very good office and so giving it up for something like that was very dangerous but like like I said, like she was the first four months I didn't even see her. Yeah. Like only at night when she was crying. And because you were working in yeah, the day job. Yeah, I was job. working all, long all day long, and I started understanding what my friends that has ki had kids before me what they were talking about. But it, I couldn't like reconcile with it. I was like, I'm not going to live this, that life. So we started learning about becoming digital nomads. And I started learning about yeah. making my my own business, my real business. Sorry, yeah. you are choked on okay. water. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yes. So, so that's interesting. So the the, 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 the work-life balance was actually one of the key motivators for you yes. to adopt yes. a, a nomadic lifestyle. Yeah, we yeah. knew we, we wanted to shift it, like not work the same hours. You know, our goals were to see her more, yeah. to, to spend more time together as a family, not only me, yeah. to see her grow up yeah. because uh, we didn't want to miss her walking or saying words that if you put in a daycare you miss a lot of stuff that in the house you don't have even time to notice because you're so busy yeah, yeah, yeah. in the house uh, and, uh, and uh, that was the goal and 
it came together in the nomad lifestyle because we knew it, yeah. we have more flexibility. Like, you start thinking of the future and yeah. about yeah. saving money for her for the future yeah. and being more financially independent. And you know you can't do it mind? with your daily day, day life in Israel because yeah. it doesn't matter how much you earn, it will always go somewhere because everything is so expensive. Yep, yeah. yeah. now it... Yeah. Uh, Expensive countries are expensive countries and, yeah. and you get expensive wages, you get high wages to, it's all balanced in those countries yeah. and when you come to cheaper parts of the world, um, yeah. it can be a little bit easier because yeah. you don't have to earn as much to be able to survive and put some money away. Yeah, and the best thing is that I really had some clients from abroad, like from US and Canada, yep. so I, I understood I can earn in, in dollars and in euros and I can spend it in in Bulgaria or in Vietnam and places that are a lot cheaper and yeah. I wouldn't have to work that much like, like I used to. So, so how was the journey to create your own business, you know, in, to, to in learn that business mindset? Yeah, I think in the, in the beginning it surprised me how much I don't know about oh. owning a business. Really? I mean, I'm, I'm a very good designer and I'm very good at my job, but I was, most of the time I worked in like other companies right. and I wasn't the boss, I didn't have to no manage, more dates. Uh, like accounting Same and, and a lot of stuff that I never Reasons? thought of. Taxes and sales yeah, taxes and prospects and, and proposals. Yeah, yeah. And but I, I think I, I picked it up pretty pretty fast and I had a lot of time because I told myself if I'm independent now, I'm going to do everything I want, everything I ever wanted to do while I was hired and something will pick up. Yep. So I just tried a lot of different directions. And it took a, a bit of time, took a bit of money, but... So, right so what was your, what are some of your best learnings on where to find new clients as a, as a designer, as a branding expert? Yeah, I think it's better to focus on online platforms because if you want to develop this lifestyle, you can't really create local, um, at least in my profession, you can't create local businesses. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, to make them and it's also... It's, it's not legal in most countries. You can't work in the country Correct. you're in. Yeah. So online platforms like Upwork, um, Toptail, Fiverr, stuff like that. Okay. And also yes. I do a lot of work on Facebook, on, on Facebook groups and communicate with people. Just, just make my brand bigger and bigger. So people understand who I am, what I do exactly. Mm -hmm. And that way you just build yourself an audience. And it's not hard selling, is it? You're, you're, no. you're not... You're not a trained no, salesperson no. that's going to push and push and push. Never. And try. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm actually very bad at selling. But, <laughs> but if I have a product I believe in and I know it's good, it's a lot easier. Right? Yeah. I just tell people about it. Yeah, yeah and we are against all the big words like you can uh, get profession in a m one month. Yeah, you can yeah. be a, a millionaire for or twenty like thousand dollars at home for big, five hours yeah, a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so no, there's, there's, there's plenty of scams out there and... and yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's a very attractive lifestyle, so mm. there are a lot of people that try to hook on that. And, yeah. and because it's people's dream, you know, just to travel the world and work and... Yeah. But, so the, but you still got this discipline, you know? Yeah. yeah. It merely needs a level of educating. You need yeah. to do, deal with clients. Now, you said you've got clients in Europe, which is great for this time zone, but America is very different. Yep. Yeah. You need to get up in the middle of the night. Yeah. Yeah, in <laughs> Vietnam, it was very, uh, oh, very hard. Yeah. It's uh, like 12 yeah. hours or so. <laughs> so you become a shift worker, which upsets the, the, yeah, the sleep yeah. rhythms. and. So, but mo it's mostly work that, that is done like in a it's project, like a website is done in a month or two months or three months. So you don't really need to be there online all the time. So, yeah. Uh, yeah and it's easier. Uh, yeah, mo most of the time it's less with clients, like it's more emails, like once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now with the tutoring, it's more like meeting and uh, Zoom meetings. And, so and do you think that those clients are more of these clients becoming open to the Zoom meeting, the email, the remote work? Especially now. I mean, I started before COVID. Yes. And it was, there are people that are always open to it and people that are not. But after COVID, it, it just exploded. Like it's, it became the norm. If I send someone a Zoom link, it's yep. like, Okay, I know how to use it. And it wasn't the same two years ago. Yep. Some people didn't know exactly what to do. I need to download, I need to open, and it, 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 it just became a lot easier. Yeah. 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 <laughs> people are got used to it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I guess that's one of the, shall we say, the positive impacts of, of these lockdowns that have occurred around yeah. the world, is it forced people to adopt technology. Yeah, not but, only Zoom. But this technology yeah. has been around a long, long time. 
it just hasn't been in widespread usage. Yeah, a lot of people now understand how easy it is to work from home. Yeah. I think there's no way we can, as a society, go back to, to driving two hours everywhere and sitting in an office for 10 hours. It's like most people will, will be very disappointed when they need to go back to the office. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of businesses even um, know now that they have to go online. Like if before they was afraid of technology and didn't want a website or didn't want to go online or Facebook, n they understood that now they, it's the only yeah. uh, way because uh, it's delivery and online shipping and so. There's a, there's a whole infrastructure around online business in most of the world today. Yeah. You know, so, and that opens up all sorts of opportunities, business opportunities. Um, you know, last night we were listening to uh, a German guy that's what been doing thinking? affiliate marketing and, and AdSense advertising on his own websites for a number of years. Yeah. And even after, what, five, six years, Jonas was talking about how it keeps changing every month. Yeah. Um, and it keeps developing. Yeah, I think that's one of the main points of learning stuff today. Instead of yeah. like going to making a degree and stuff like that. It changes so fast, it doesn't matter what you learned four years ago, yeah. today everything is different. So yeah. you need to keep learning all of, the, all of the time and be curious because there's no other way to survive like digital uh, professions. I'm curious as to whether you keep in contact with your old work colleagues which might still be in Israel yeah. doing the 9 to 5. Yeah, yeah. And we have like a WhatsApp group and we talk all the time. And, yeah. It's not like a personal relationship. Like we meet every time we go to visit Israel, yes. which is like two or three times a year, maybe. Yeah. Um, but some friends are very, very close, so it doesn't matter. Even if you come home after three years, <laughs> yep. it's like you never left, and everything is natural. Yeah. yeah. No. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So tell us a little bit more about um, the business you're doing. You know, the the niche that you've carved yourself out in this nomadic world. Well, I specialize in branding, I do branding for businesses, and uh, web design, which is mostly brand oriented, mm -hmm. like not online stores and very techy, complex yeah. stuff, but things that are more uh, driven from the design. From the design. And yeah. also, I, during COVID, I started teaching online, uh, mostly in Hebrew because it's comfortable, so Israel is teaching them how to build websites and how to design. So. Okay. So that's like that's my niche. People know in Israel. People know that I teach online. Yep. What they do. Uh, and, and clients around the world do mostly branding. And, uh, and branding is is also mostly high tech in startups. I think the elementor is using it. It's like a niche. Like a yeah, yeah. Elementor is is, is a niche, but. Uh, so I what do, what's Elementor? Tell us about Elementor. Yeah, elementor is a it's a. It started as a page builder for uh, WordPress, yep. that you can build your own page without knowing code. And it developed into a full website builder, and it's crazy. It's like five years old, and it has like eight million users all around the world. It really changed the whole uh, industry. The whole so it's a, it's a no-code um, yeah. WordPress uh, platform. Yeah, there were a lot of them before, but none of them was the same. Like the interface and the whole balance there is just amazing. It's very open. You're dancing. You can do things you, you could never do before without code. And it works well with branding. It, you can obviously develop some high quality, yeah. high visually um, structured sites. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you do the branding very well, you don't need a very complex website. Because okay. the design does, does the storytelling, does the whole work. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, so you stand up. so you, you've become an expert in a few yeah. short years <laughs> around how to get great looking websites, great branded um, products using the latest modern technologies, WordPress and, and no code and Elementor. Yeah, w one of my biggest problems becoming freelance is that I don't know coding and I never wanted to do. I, I learned a, l a little bit but it just it's not me. I'm, <laughs> I'm a designer, I need the shapes and the colors and stuff like that. So I, I, I literally, I think, tested every other tool out there, like uh, Wix and Webflow, and they all have their advantages and disadvantages, but Elementor had a very good balance between it's easy to use, it's fun to use, yep. and it's still it's not limited, I can do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. So we, that, that's one of the things that helped me build my business very well, because I can earn the whole budget and not work with a developer and then share the revenue, yeah. and it's a lot easier. Interesting. 
So better looking websites, faster, cheaper, and yes, yeah. uh, more profitable for each of the okay. yeah. suppliers, like yeah, yourself. Yeah, and and they can really control the, the design. Like the hardest thing for me working in, uh, in the agency was working with the developer. And developers usually don't know to design. Yes. So you always have to communicate. And stuff, sometimes you have other stuff like clients and pressure yeah. and stuff like that. So the quality of the work never goes to your expectations. So doing it by yourself, you just need to learn it very, very well to use the tool. But that's so very good. Have you got any staff or freelancers on your team as your business is growing? No, nope. not yet. Not no, yet. I'm, kind, I'm, I'm kind of weird in that way. I'm, I'm not looking to expand. I'm just looking to. Um, I'm trying right now simultaneously to work on, on products that I will, won't need to change my time for right. money. So I don't want to expand as a business, I just want to work less and earn the same. Like a passive income. To have more time with family and yeah. travel. And I know if I expand, it will you be different be because I will need to manage people. And no. So, so okay. developing into your own agency is not the preferred model. Not, not the, no. not the, yeah, but to not develop the some automated no. tools that, yeah. that help people yeah. is. Yeah. That's great. So you, you've actually created, you're in the process of creating your own tools. Yes. It actually turns you into like a startup. Uh, yeah, you can say. <laughs> <laughs> so in two years, you've gone from employee to freelancer, small to agency, startup. to startup. <laughs> While being a dad and traveling, how many, you mentioned six countries? Um, yeah, yeah. I don't think it, it would happen without her. Well, this, this, is so, this is so hard, people don't understand. I even don't understand, she's only two and a half years old, you know, but um, Liraz is really, is, just amazing. She does everything just to yeah. make this work, and we really work, work as a mom. team. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. She also works. It's not just she's, she's just a full-time mom. So it's very hard to balance. We we did an interview recently with uh, a lady I'm entrepreneur sure. that travels on a boat with three boys, and her husband is, is the one that keeps the the. Yeah. The, the family operating, you know, family activity operating, because the wife was the, the major money earner and wow. with clients and so forth. It's, it's exactly the same thing. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a balance, it's, it's a, a balance. partnership. It's like we're a team the whole way. It doesn't really matter who does what as long as we always do stuff together for a goal. For, yeah. for, for I, think, our goals. I think this is the common for every family we met. Like, you know, from the start that the, the family, the couple, had the talk and they know they will need to support each other. Okay. The, it, it's, this is the base for everything because if you're not thinking that you're going to cooperate and you're yeah. going to have to make some sacrifices and you, you need to work together, then you, you won't start. So I think okay. this is the big jump for people when they understand they are willing to to give like uh, for, for the... Um, lifestyle and for the freedom so it's an attitudinal change that yeah. that starts mm. yeah. okay let's talk about some tips for other families that are thinking about going nomadic mm. let's start i think we I think we do it a lot because a lot of people ask questions all the time yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> i think the most important thing was understanding that it's not really a dream you know you're yeah. not living your dream and people have this fantasy when you just travel all the time on the beach and work a little bit and it's not it's, it's a lifestyle you just you change one lifestyle for another yeah so you have the good things and you have the bad things and you need to take everything like to, to have expecta good expectations and not be disappointed yeah and yeah. the tip is to i think to write everything like we use a lot of apps and like things that help us um, uh, be more organized or even we, before we went to the trip checklist and list of what we are going to do yeah. to, to see how it's going to be like yeah. uh, to know what the schedule is going to be and of course things change and after three months it's not the same and when you transfer to another country think, uh, things change you are flexible but you do have to have the base write down so so you you're visualizing it and, yeah. and then cementing that visualization in a in a written plan yeah it's very organized you are very organized <laughs> yeah it's very important because then also using digital tools for everything we use yeah. trello mm -hmm. for, for my work for her work for Millie, uh, 
uh, homeschooling for our daily stuff or everything. So everything is written, is planned, and the truth is, is more of the digital. Yeah, yeah, okay, but we I'm it a bit behind, but I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I see how much it helps, but uh, just. Uh, maybe because of me it's the same I'm, I don't want to be on the phone a lot of time no, so yeah. I, it's it's harder to keep track and it's track. hard to concentrate <laughs> <laughs> I write something and then, and then I like uh, lose focus and then I need to go back uh, so one tip is really write down yep. uh, another thing is uh, don't take too much with you yeah. you can buy a lot of things for a cheap price you can take uh, important stuff yep. uh, that you must have and you don't think you survive without it but you can find anything anywhere in a cheap uh, especially toys mm -hmm. I can say this is the most uh, the only thing we didn't took I think maybe we took you see we bought this one uh -huh. and this one in Japan I think this is in uh, Romania uh -huh. and we like we took it everywhere to make it something consistent so uh, sometimes people have blankets she didn't had one she didn't like connect it to one yep. uh, so and we don't travel with toys too much just things that are more flexible mm -hmm. light easy. Yeah, sometimes we buy toys in every country and then when we leave we donate them and yeah. Doing. I think if, if we didn't, if we weren't nomads, we had a lot more toys that she would play with. Looking for raisins. Well, she would at least have the choice of. But yeah. you know, kids discard toys that they've used for a while. They move yeah. on to the latest thing. Yeah. And we think, I oh, will just keep that around. We do the same with clothing. Yeah. 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 Um, we, we got really strong into minimalism, yeah. especially by Ferrazzo. So. And it's also one of the biggest things that change the way we live. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you go to a new country, do you do you research out uh, hospitals, medical systems? Um, yeah. We usually we try to find um, small cities like Bensko, not like big, very busy cities, yep. but they are still close to, to stuff like that, to hospitals and yep. services, and, uh, and and we mostly love nature, so we try to find places that are close to nature. Right. Yeah. And we see where is the hospital nearby. Yeah, and supermarket. Supermarket. Like that. It's important. We research everything. Because we yeah. cook yeah. a lot of home. We, yes. We try not to to like take out a lot. And um, what more we are looking for places you can hike. Like even yeah. if there's places with nice uh, nature, but yep. there's no places to travel or hike, or you need to drive three hours. Yeah. Then we, we we prefer you can do like a day trip yep. to places for nice places. Uh, transportation wise we, we didn't drive uh, first yeah, time we drove here. It, it was here we, we, we rented rent the, the car, car to the supermarket <laughs> <laughs> in Vietnam we had, we had bicycles yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was for safety reasons we didn't take because you have insurance and everything but we didn't want to take a chance and no. we were at places that it wasn't that uh, easy to drive yeah. like Vietnam it's crazy and uh, Georgia Georgia, yeah, the same. And before she was too small, and uh, it was uh, difficult, like to, to yeah. find the car seat and everything. Yeah. Yeah. We just had to keep it light, also on expenses, because renting a car is always yeah. the most expensive option. It, of just... it it varies a lot. Where when we were here last time in Bansko, we were renting a car for forty euros yeah, a month. Does. Now, you can't complain about that. Yeah, um, right now it's... It's, uh, it's not at the moment. In fact, I saw that in Bulgaria there's a whole fleet of electric vehicles you can rent at about one and a half thousand lever, I think it is, so 750, 800 euros a month for an electric vehicle. Wow! <laughs> it's good if you can live in it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, what would you do different? And, you know, now that you've got a couple of years experience traveling as a family, uh, starting your own business enterprises, what would you do different that if you knew when you started? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I would do anything different. Maybe just the locations themselves, because at the beginning we really wanted to travel and the Czech Republic really was expensive, yeah. but we didn't care about it. Was we, we weren't yeah. yet in the mindset of our lifestyle. Yeah. Like, because we used to travel a lot before. 
keep. We wanted to keep that. So I would, now I'm smarter, so I would know to first uh, go to the cheapest places, build a business, build the income, make the lifestyle achievable and yep. scalable, and then go anywhere else. I think of the of the time we spent too, because we, when we started, we, we thought yeah. uh, we're gonna stay two weeks and then another two weeks in another place yeah, and then um, another yeah. month in another place. And after Europe, we understood that it's just uh, too fast. Yes. Like we didn't have time to settle down, and every transition it takes a lot of energy and it takes yeah. a couple of times you are going back to normal and to the routine. And then so we got Vietnam for ten months, <laughs> and we understood. Okay. Yeah. Uh, two weeks is, is fast, 10 months is slow, you <laughs> find something in between. Yeah, and then we realized that a lot of the visas, uh, most of places are three months. Yes. Like uh, this is the... The standard. The, yeah. yeah. So I think this is, we tried a month, two months. Yeah, between two and three months and... and we can and, change and like and cities. A month in a city. Yeah. Third, not, not less than that. Yeah, to, to change the landscape and the scenery, but... Uh, in Georgia, we've been two months in Tbilisi. Yeah. There are no more raisins. You ate everything. And and how do you go about meeting locals and community and other mm. nomads? How, how do you develop a community I around think you? Bansko was the first place that we actually stayed in a place that had the community. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, it was just people like Niraz used to go with her to the playground and she meet another Wait, parent me? and then we Mama contact me. with them and we go to Mama dinner and stuff like that. It was very natural, it wasn't like yeah. busy like this. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's very different, I love it like right now because um, when you stay longer in the same place you, you have more time yeah. to be more, more social. In Georgia we, we had a chance, yeah. there was uh, more nomads and Israeli nomads so uh, there was a, a lot of other nomads, like mm -hmm. it, we met with a couple of, uh, that are Israeli and are, uh, stayed in Georgia for a long time and a family that we met uh, in, uh, where was it, uh, Kutaisi or in so. the mountains? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we met them and Mili played with the kids and yeah. uh, this is, is the th first time they met. She met with Israeli yeah. family. Because ah. in Vietnam we, we uh, met a very lovely family from California. Mm -hmm. that we, yeah. we, we got we, co connected to them very. Yeah, very for fast. five months because they stayed, you know, young. Yeah. <laughs> so I think every places we went, if there was a possibility, we made our own community. Now that she's older, I think it's easier because you can go meet with others when yeah. she was yeah, a baby and very it's, small. It's her. I'm a, I'm a troll. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a cave, sit on the computer all day and she meets people. <laughs> I take you with me sometimes. <laughs> well, at least but you're not commuting house. for two hours a day yeah, to yeah, an office. But and she helps me uh, connect with people. Yeah. <laughs> you want Uli or Ogi? That's, that's Millie lovely. Too. Millie is uh, like a magnet. Yeah, that she's got that beautiful smile, doesn't she? You love yeah. that. We used to you travel before smile. her, and it was like, you know, some people smile at you, some people don't. It's like very, very casual. But with her, it's just everybody. Yeah. Everywhere. <laughs> You're Except magnet. you automatically, just because of her. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and your curls, of course. Oh. Everybody, like most of the places we were in uh, Europe, they are not used to their curls and everything. <laughs> so they come and they touch and... Oh, in Vietnam, that? people in the street just took her and took photographs and we were like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> they don't ask you nothing, just yeah. take the kid and take photos. Oh. No, no, uh -huh. Lovely, <laughs> lovely. Well, Modi, Laraz, thank you. That's been thank really you great. Thank, thank you us. for the opportunity and yeah. it's very nice. And, and we all wish you all the best with whichever place you visit next and the lifestyle yeah. continues and success with uh, with Millie and growing your businesses and exploring more thank of the you. world. Thank And uh, we forgot to say, I think it's the first interview that Millie is away. Oh. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. in English. <laughs> so you, you did survived. a good job. Yay. How you say good? Good. <laughs> nice. Yay. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. It's, a, it's another interview with um, uh, Nomads in so Meet the Nomads at Nomad Stays. Um, come and have a look at our site and find places to travel around the world, meet fascinating couples and, and people like we've just interviewed. And we'll see you on the road. Cheers for now. Good job, Neely.
You want a drink? Water? Oh, hi. Bye. Is it finished?